Memphis native Aretha Franklin's legacy lives on today, and now some of her last chapters in life are being shared thanks to the lens of one acclaimed photographer. His new book, Aretha Cool, is a tribute to the queen of soul, and joining us this morning is celebrity, fashion, and beauty photographer, photographer Matthew Jordan Smith. Matthew, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Kanji. How you doing? Good to be here. Yeah, uh, the name. I have to start with the name because it's just, you know, it's cool. <laughs> How did you come, come to that? Well, everybody knows Aretha Franklin as being the queen of soul, but from the very first time I met her, she was actually the queen of cool. Now, we talked a lot on the phone, and everybody has their way of using, like, you know, ums or whatever. And every time I talk to Aretha, instead of saying, um, she'd say, yeah, cool, cool. <laughs> so for me, it was a no brainer, Aretha cool. Oh, wow. All right. And so I saw, you know, you even have her pictures there behind you and we're showing some on the screen. It's Clive Davis, Quincy Jones. Um, we're seeing her on the screen and tell us about your special relationship with her. What, what was it that connected the two of you? I think, uh, quite a few things. Number one, we're both, you know, uh, children of preachers, mm. preachers, kids, PKs, <laughs> and then the love of music, the love of music. Um, when I first met her, I wasn't playing her music. I was playing like Motown songs and some other songs and she liked them, of course. But then I found out that she really enjoyed liking, hearing her own music. So every time I shot her, I played my favorite Aretha Franklin songs oh, and wow. seeing that reaction, oh, that was it. And so how did that work out? I mean, because some of these pictures that I'm seeing look like she's in a car and I'm like, you had to be, you know, standing outside the car. I mean, were, were those arranged? Like, were, were you guys just hanging out? And then some of them were planned photography shoots? They're all of the above. They're, uh -huh. they're planned photo shoots in studio. They're her at, behind the scenes at parties, backstage in the green room, me greeting her as she's going and coming from events and everything you can think of in between. So we got to know each other very, very well. And it, this, you're, it's being described as just a different view of the Queen of Soul. Explain that to me, why everybody's saying that. Well, everything we've seen of her happened before I ever met her. Like all the movies, all the documentaries, they all happened years before I ever met her. I met Aretha the last, the last part of her life, so 2005, until the, the end of her life. Mm. And all my pictures are from that part, the last the last chapter, really, in the Queen of Souls life. Yeah, that's when she, you know what? She started to really impart that wisdom. You know, being, I think, famous for that long and seeing everything all around the world, that's when we just started hearing just so much wisdom uh, coming from her. And, you know, this is Women's History Month. And so I have to absolutely. ask about Aretha's impact on the world and how you think that continues to endure today. Well, I, I, I travel the world as a photographer and I hear her music everywhere. I was in, in uh, Tokyo recently and I, I went into a coffee shop and mm. as I walked in there playing Respect, I'm like, oh wow, here's Aretha's music and I hear that all the time. And then I hear from other people in the Netherlands, in, 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 uh, in China, in, in, uh, in France, telling me about their love of Aretha once they find out I've worked with her. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Okay, I know this is gonna be hard, but uh, do you have a favorite picture? And if so, why? Oh, wow. I know, I know. I, I have quite a few favorites okay. of the Queen of Soul, uh, and they're all tied to emotions that happen during a shoot. Some, she always would sing along, sometimes hum, sometimes sing along to her music. So I have memories based on things that happen on the shoot. But also there are those times when she's just laughing or about to laugh. And I love those pictures because there's a smirk there that nobody knows but me. I love those images. And we're looking at a picture of the two of you together. Who takes a picture of you? And <laughs> did you put that on like a delay and then run? I mean, what? <laughs> no, that's actually one of my assistants <gasps> okay. who shot that picture. So <laughs> I've you, got to give it up to them. Do you think it's kind of crazy, you know, when you think of your life, right? And we know that you have photographed the most visible people in the world, but you literally got concerts with Aretha Franklin, in-person private concerts. I mean, do you ever think about that? 
I think about that all the time because, yes, I've shot a lot of different artists, uh, celebrities, icons, but Aretha made you feel so comfortable, like you're with, you know, an aunt or whomever, and it made it easy for me to bond with her and just connect. And she could be herself because of that, like having her sing in front of me as I'm taking her picture four feet in front of her, that was incredible. So in Aretha Cool, I want to show people and give them the feeling of what that was like so they can also have that and rejoice in her legacy. Okay, so it is a heavy and full and be absolutely beautiful uh, coffee table book. Where can people get their hands on a copy of Aretha Cool? On Amazon right now. For everybody in the state, you can go to Amazon and order your copy right now. All right, and you saw his Instagram handle, so you can see more of those beautiful pictures. Thank you so much, Matthew Jordan Smith, for taking your time to tell us about Aretha because she means so much to the Memphis area. Thank you. To all of us. Thank you, Kanji. Yeah. Pleasure.